In this video, I want to show you how we can use local adjustments, specifically how we can use a brush tool in our local adjustments to really bring our images to life. So take a look at this example, for instance. This is the power and the impact that using a brush tool has on our final image. So let's dive in and let me show you exactly how this is gonna work. Now, we have this image loaded up. This is our before image here. And the first thing we wanna do is make some global adjustments that gives us the foundation we need to then shape the light according to what we want it to look like with the adjustment brush. So I'm gonna click on light here on the bottom panel. And the first thing I'm gonna do is just gonna make the image a little bit brighter. So I'm gonna take the exposure slider, and I'm just gonna increase this just a little bit. Some around there is good. And what that's doing is just lifting up the shadows a little bit. Now the next thing I wanna do is recover the highlights, because obviously the sky looks a little bit blown out and I'm losing detail in the sky. So let's recover that detail. The way we do it, we grab our highlight slider and we're gonna drag that to the left. And honestly, I'm just gonna go all the way here. Look at what that does. Really go so far to recover that highlight detail. That makes a really big difference here. The next step we're gonna do is shadow detail. So we're gonna grab shadows and we're gonna drag that to the right. I think somewhere around 75. That's already looking so much better. Next up we have our white. So I'm gonna go ahead and click that and I'm gonna drag that up somewhere around 35. That's looking pretty good. Then I'm gonna grab my blacks and move those down a little bit. I think that looks good there, about negative 20. That's really giving me a little bit more contrast to work with. So now that we adjusted the light a little bit, let's talk about the details. I'm gonna open up my effects panel here. I'm gonna grab my clarity slider and I'm just gonna reduce the clarity. I wanna soften up the image a little bit. Somewhere around typically negative 20. Let's go a little bit further. Let's do negative 25. Next, I wanna offset that with my texture slider. So I'm gonna grab texture. I'm gonna drag that up to the right a little bit. Just around plus 10 will do it. Next, I wanna add just a little bit of dehaze. So I'm gonna grab my dehaze slider and drag that to the right this time. Just adds a little bit more punch. Now, while we're here, I do wanna add just a little bit of a vignette. I think that does go a long way to concentrate the viewer's eye towards the middle of the photo. There we go. Next up, I wanna focus on the color. So let's go ahead and click on that color tab and let's take our vibrant slider here and I'm gonna drag that to the right. Let's do 15. That's already looking so much better, so much more vibrant. Now, there's one last thing I wanna do in terms of color. I'm gonna drag up until I see the word grading. I'm gonna tap on that. And just like I did in previous examples, I'm gonna click on that third wheel here, the wheel that indicates my highlights. Then I'm gonna drag up. I'm gonna find my hue. I'm gonna drag that to 40. I'm gonna grab my saturation and just drag that to the right until I'm happy with the result. That's really starting to look good. I'm gonna drag right back down here and click on the word done. It's gonna bring us back to our color menu here. Now we have our foundation in place. So let's open up our masking tool and let's show you how we can apply localized adjustments using brushes. So what is it that I wanna do here? Well, I wanna create a path of light. I wanna understand and then simulate what light's gonna do to fall on the peaks of this valley here and then have shadows define the edges of those peaks as well. We can't do that with just a pocket of light. That's exactly why we're using brushes here. So I know where that sun is, it's peeking out behind the trees. With my brush tool, I'm just gonna start painting this area here. Right now, we just wanna paint in general with a brush so you can see what this is going to do. Now let's talk about the options we have available to us. The first icon allows us to paint in. If I click on that eraser tool, then I can paint away. That's gonna be important because we wanna make sure we're painting in a very specific area. So just know you don't have to get it perfect the first time. You can always erase the areas if you've gone too far. Now to talk about these other adjustments, what will be a little bit easier, at least when we first get started, is to drag this menu out. I'm just gonna grab that vertical white line here and drag to the right. Well, first we had our brush and we had our eraser. Now we have our size available to us. So if I just click and drag, that's gonna tell me exactly how large or how small the area that's going to be impacted when we start brushing. So for this, we actually wanna make this quite small here. The next up is our feather. We're probably familiar with that from the previous tools, but what that will do is just soften the gradient, soften the edges of the brush to really sell the effect, to make it realistic. So typically when I'm brushing, I almost always have the feather up 100%. It's only honestly, either if I'm erasing or I have a very, very defined area where I want a hard edge, that's where I would reduce that feather. Next up is our flow. So rather than just telling you what this does, let me show you. Now I'm gonna grab the flow and bring it all the way up so you can really see this effect. And I'm just gonna paint once in the sky. Now take a look at that. Now we do have a very soft edge, don't we? That's because we have the feather set to 100. But watch what happens if I paint again. I'm not building anything. I'm just sort of adding to what's already there, only in the new areas. Now let me undo that. Now I'm gonna reduce the flow. I'll bring that down to around 15 or so. And now let me do the same thing again. I'm just gonna paint 
And you're going to see it's a very, very, very subtle effect, isn't it? But watch what happens when I paint again. And watch what happens when I paint again. Now you're starting to see this effect build. So I have this granular control of intensity of that adjustment that I couldn't do if I had flow at 100%. So for this example, actually, I'm just gonna keep this at 15 because that's really gonna give us the control and this one adjustment is gonna help us keep that looking very realistic. Now, with those adjustments in place, I'm gonna drag this slider back to the left, get those icons out of the way. I'm going to close this mask out entirely. I'm gonna discard the changes and let's paint for real this time. Now, here's what I wanna do. I have this idea. I really wanna emphasize the power and the color of that light coming from the left-hand side of the frame. So in order to do that, I'm just gonna zoom in just a little bit here so we can really see what's happening. We're not just completely creating the effect from nothing. We're understanding the way the light works and we're going to emphasize that. We're gonna grab our masking tool again. We're gonna click that plus icon. I'm gonna grab my brush by clicking on it. Now what's left to do is just to paint in the areas that I want to be affected. So I'm just gonna follow the pattern of light that's already there. I'm going to just paint right in the middle here. And I'm gonna paint a little more I'm gonna paint a little more. So I have this area already selected. But as we get further and further away from this little region here, we start to get more specific with our light. And that's the power and beauty of utilizing a brush, is now we can paint just the highlight areas, just like that. And if I zoom back out here, I can get these larger areas. So just the top part of that valley here, and just this area at the beginning of this hill. Something like that. I'm basically mimicking what's happening with the light already and just painting in where the highlights are. And I'm gonna emphasize that by making those highlights a little bit brighter and a little bit warmer. I think this is gonna work quite well. I'm just gonna paint in a couple other areas here. Okay, so now that we have our brush painting already done, now let's go ahead and make some adjustments. So first thing I wanna do, because we're working with just the highlights here, is I'm gonna grab my exposure slider, and I'm just gonna increase the exposure. In fact, I'm gonna go a little too far so you can see what I'm talking about. Now you're seeing that we're starting to shape the light. We couldn't do this using other tools. We're getting very, very specific. I'm not gonna go that far, maybe just about 20%. So the next thing we need to do to really sell this effect is to add a little bit of warmth to the color temperature, right? That's really what would happen as we have a warm glow from the rising sun in this case. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on color, grab my temperature slider. Now I'm gonna go a little bit too far just to show you what this looks like. I think this is too much, but even at 100%, that doesn't look too bad, does it? So I'm gonna back this down a little bit. I want this to look realistic. Maybe we'll do around 40. I'm gonna click on my effects panel here. I'm gonna grab my clarity slider. I'm gonna drag this to the right just a little bit. It's gonna add just a little bit more punch to this adjustment, so around maybe 15 or so. And the last thing I wanna do is go back to my light. I'm gonna grab that white slider and just drag it to the right just a little bit. I think that looks really good there. That just takes the very brightest part of the adjustments and makes them even brighter. You know what, I just wanna emphasize this a little bit more. And the beauty of working in Lightroom Mobile is that everything is non-destructive, meaning we can make these adjustments and we can tweak them at any time. I'm gonna open up my exposure slider here at the top and just drag this to the right just a little bit more. Now let's click and hold on that masking button to show you the before and the after. Do you see that adjustment starting to take place? This is what I'm talking about. We understand how light naturally occurs and then we emphasize that. We're taking the best parts of our images and we're making them even better. Now, if we really want this to have maximum impact, we take the shadow areas of this image and darken those too. So let's do that. I'm gonna click on that checkbox here. That's gonna get out of our first mask. Click on the masking icon again, click on the plus icon, click on the brush, and now we're gonna paint on some of the shadow areas here. So in the foreground, for instance, I'm just gonna paint. And I'm gonna paint on this hill back here, paint on this hill back here, and I'm gonna zoom in just a little bit here. And I'm gonna paint on the back side of all these hills here. And that's really the secret to this is you wanna paint as if the sun was gonna scrape across the scene, whatever the sun doesn't touch is gonna to fall into shadow. We're just gonna emphasize that a little bit more. So even all the way in here, I'm gonna paint in that area. So now that we have the adjustment brush painted exactly where we want, here's what we need to do. I'm gonna click on light over here. I'm gonna find my shadow slider. 
I'm just gonna click and drag that to the left, maybe somewhere around negative 20, right? We don't want to add too much contrast to the scene. We just wanna sell the effect. If light was hitting the highlight areas, the rest would fall into shadow. What that does is give us an emphasis or contrast of the overall image in a very natural and yet effective way. Now, speaking of natural and effective, there's actually one more thing I wanna do this photo, and I think it's really gonna work well. I'm gonna click on that checkbox on the bottom right, I'm gonna click on masking again, I'm gonna click this plus icon, and I'm gonna click on radial gradient, and I'm gonna add just a nice big elliptical adjustment here right to where that sun would be. And with that effect in place, I'm gonna go ahead and click on my light tab here. I'm gonna find my exposure slider, and I'm gonna make this just a little bit brighter. I think that's gonna look pretty good at 20. I'm gonna find my whites, make this just a little bit brighter as well, 30 or so, I think that's looking pretty good. And then I'm gonna go ahead and click on color. I wanna add just a little bit of warmth to the final result. So I'm gonna find my temperature slider, I'm gonna drag that to the right as well. 20 is gonna do a good job. And look what happens when we add just a little bit of warmth and a little bit of brightness. It really does sell the entire effect. If I click the checkbox on the bottom right hand side there, let me point your attention to this area on the top part of the sky, what we call a contrail. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on the healing brush icon on the bottom here. I'm gonna zoom in to the area that I want to fix. I'm just gonna drag right over that area and that's it. I'm gonna go ahead and click on that checkbox on the bottom right, that will bring me right back out. Now let's take a look at our before and our after. It really is such a profound difference, isn't it? It looks natural and it feels natural because we understand the way light works and we use the best tool for the job, in this case the brush tool, and at the end of it all, we walk away with an absolutely beautiful photo in the process. This video was a free preview of the iPhone Editing Academy online course. In this course, you'll discover everything you need to know to edit your photos to perfection using the device that's always in your pocket. Whether you want to breathe new life into your old images or make your best photos even better, you'll find out exactly how to do that on your iPhone. I'll show you the latest photo editing tricks that will transform even average photos into stunning masterpieces in just a few minutes. So if you'd like to learn more about creating incredible photo edits on your iPhone, please take a look at the full version of my iPhone Editing Academy course. You'll find the link in the description right next to this video. So click on that link now and I'll see you inside the full version of this course.